you know, I've always been loved art, and I've always kind of been the kid in the class that got to do the bigger part of whatever art project it was in grade school, you know. But I never considered it as a profession. And so I went to UC with the uh, idea that I was going to go to medical school and become a doctor. A surgeon is what I wanted to do. And I started taking art classes uh, for a couple reasons. One, a, a surgeon who I was kind of following around said, you know, it would help with sculpture skills, you know, get some, using your hands, a little bit more manual dexterity. So I started taking art classes, uh, you know, also to help boost my GPA. I thought it would, it would help that way, and it did. Working in hospitals, uh, I sort of, you know, I wasn't sure I wanted to do it after I really got in it. Uh, and I really just kind of fell back in love with art. You know, that UC really didn't stress realism when I was there too much, so uh, that's what I was drawn to. So when I found, uh, I kind of found Carl Sampson, who you're going to interview here in a little bit, and uh, I saw a painting he did of a figure model that we were painting at UC, and we were all doing just terrible paintings of. And his was amazing. It was the, I didn't know anybody alive could paint like that anymore. And so the model gave me his number, and I tracked him down and just begged him to teach me what he knew. And although he was too busy at the time, he pushed me in the right direction. And so I studied with somebody who had similar training to him uh, in New Hampshire. And then I went to uh, New Hampshire to study at Paul Ingberson School of Drawing and Painting. Uh, in New Hampshire, uh, it's almost like a, it was almost like a religious experience. It really was. I mean, I I got there and I was pretty terrified. I had never seen the school. I really I didn't know anything when I got there. But then when I finally got there, I felt like this is exactly where I need to be. This is usually a point in the story where I start crying, but I'll, I'll try not to do that. Uh, but it was just uh, the ability to finally have somebody who was a master of their craft teach me how to do it as well, and show me the steps that it takes to. Um, paint a truthful image. And lately, um, I've I'm, I'm been inspired a lot by just memories of childhood. And so when you look at my paintings, I think you'll see a lot of uh, things that I remember that were pleasant memories from being a kid. I'm, and I do a lot of stuff that are kind of two scenes that kind of work together. So to be like the father and son image back here. And so it's just, uh, uh, you know, just playing with toys and just vintage, you know, just, I try to create a mood of just what it was like. Like I, I was painting a picture called the Monster Attacks at Breakfast, and it's just a, a scene of, a, bre a breakfast scene where a kid's obviously uh, playing with his toys, creating this war that happens in the midst. So there's a dinosaur toy and some soldiers, and uh, it was just fun, because what happens is you kind of become a kid again, and I was like, well, you know, some of these soldiers have to be knocked down, so I would push them over. And you're just kind of playing with your still life setup to create this scene. And the, the thing that I find fascinating is I just, you know, I, you know, I've got a huge collection of basically junk uh, that I have saved over the years. Like I've got, like I've got all my old toys from when I was a kid. You know, when I grab that stuff off the shelf, I remember things that I haven't thought of, you know, in 30 years. And it's amazing that it's just as I paint. Uh, you know, these just emotions kind of well up. And what I hope is that that shows in the final image. So I would say, you know, for me, the inspiration can come from somebody handing me a teacup. You know, what do you think of this? And so, and what I kind of try to do is build scenes and little vignettes that hopefully will create a story.